Uh, what I'd like to do as a respondent, um, Bill Men uh, sorry, uh, David mentioned, we've been asked to address a question, a number of questions actually. Uh, the first of which is who should take lead on creating the change to the curriculum? And the second one really around what are our own organisations doing and how are we reframing our educational provision? We only have a few minutes to do this. So what I'd like to do is to draw on one or two themes and to present a response from my own personal perspective actually. Um, of teaching engineering at Great Watt University at both undergraduate and postgraduate level. So first of all then, who should lead? Um, I do think, and I'm sure we have consensus here, that this needs to be a collective response. I think perhaps best informed by a roadmap outlining in particular how we're defining mainstreaming. And we've all of us been asked to consider both top down and bottom up. And of course, we heard Katie speak about the middle out concept too. And while it's only my opinion, I think we should try and remember that in actual fact, we don't lack the skills, the knowledge, or indeed the technology to be able to mainstream zero carbon. And that with a collaborative and coordinated, very much interdisciplinary and interdependent working approach, and David has mentioned a framework, we should actually feel empowered to make this change. And in do so, doing so, I would argue that in actual fact, we don't need any wholesale revision of our curriculum, at least not in higher education. And I'd like to point to a few examples to why in just a second. Now, there is indeed work to be done, and I would suggest that this is more of a reframing than any core fundamental change. Two related points here that I'd like to, to highlight. Uh, firstly, we have to ensure that we have optimum an, an optimum balance of generalised knowledge and skills versus a more specialised deep learning. We do hear this from employers, that this is actually absolutely key. So it's clear here that we have... Universal, universal support for collaborative working across disciplines. And this is, of course, correct. Uh, however, there does remain a need for built environment professionals who hold a deep understanding of their own particular discipline. I think we have to recognise that we already have degree programmes that are quite congested. And so we need to be really careful that we don't squeeze out those important fundamentals. And secondly, and we've alluded to this, but we do tend not to spend so much time discussing how we balance our educational provision to account for a reduction in operational energy of existing building stock. And so I would suggest that this also needs to be front and centre of any roadmap or framework developed. And my third point relates to enabling a sense of agency. And I'm sure that all of us who are directly engaged in education and who have the chance to work with students and trainees are reassured of their passion and their dedication to pursue, pursue zero carbon. And from a personal perspective, I've seen this in both my own students. I've also seen it in my role as SIBSI president, working with the SIBSI Yen and the young engineers. And at Harry, what we believe that presenting opportunities to our students helps to develop a strong sense of agency that's absolutely core to this education change. So by way of example, um, just two things here very quickly. Uh, I'm Almost, thank you. Uh, we just like to flag a uh, team steamer Harriet Watts solar decathlon entry, and they're actually the only UK team accepted into the Middle East competition. They're currently working very hard actually to have their project completed to coincide with Expo 2020. Now, importantly, this project is to design, procure, and construct a zero carbon home. It's completely student led, and I think given the circumstances of the past 10 months, that team has had to be even more independent and innovative than would normally have been the case. And the second example is our mandatory first semester year one pan discipline course, where the syllabus here is defined by the climate emergency with an underlying pedagogy that's challenge based. And in this case, students are asked to represent a country at COP26. And, and all of this work is peer assessed. Now, these are only two quick examples, but these to finish, these elements of co-creation co help students gain an awareness of contribution to global environmental challenges. And so enabling the opportunities for students to grow this sense of agency means that we can actually help to contribute to an increased, I think, piece of change. And Bill, I think I probably used up all of my three minutes, so I shall stop there.